Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speed here, and today we're going to be going over 7 builds you can try in 7.31b. I made one of these videos about a week and a half ago, but obviously I've played the patch for a week and a half now. <laughs> and I've come up with a few builds that I really like playing, I've watched an insane amount of Dota to really just kind of see what people are running, what works, and what are some cool builds that you guys can go, some off meta, some fun builds, things to try out that actually do work and are viable, not just like random shitter builds, like actually good stuff that works, but is a little bit weird. Let's get into it. And now I want to tell you guys a little bit about Dota Plus from Overwolf. This is a free stats app you guys can download right now that's going to show you your stats for the last three months. So if you want to know your games played, your MMR, your win rate, your XPM, your GPM, all of these things you need to track to know how well you're doing and what you need to change to gain MMR, you can get for absolutely free. On top of that, the biggest reason why you need to download Dota Plus, at least for me, is the band suggestions. Basically, it tells you what the enemy team is good at. It tells you their best heroes, what they've been winning with. You just ban it. You might be wondering why your good heroes, why your best heroes keep getting banned. It's because of Dota Plus. The enemy team is using it and banning out your best heroes. So go download Dota Plus right now and I'll see you guys there. All right, coming into number one, I do want to talk about Primal Beast in this video. I feel like this is a hero that is difficult to play. I think he's very, very strong, but difficult to play. Now, here's the big thing for me for Primal Beast. Primal Beast, I think you have to play around movement speed and BKB. I don't think there's much of a way around this. If you don't do this, I think the hero generally will struggle. This is what I've seen. So here's the build that Topson goes. I watched him play an entire game of it, and this looked very powerful. He went magic wand, pretty simple, you know, average laning items, magic wand, or, or you know, just stick, depending on the lane, into boots, into phase boots. After that, he went for drums. Drums build from Windlace and Belt of Strength, incredible build up for Primal Beast in the early game. Generally, with these early stat items, you should almost always win the lane. After you complete your drums, you're going to rush BKB immediately. Honestly, you should not be playing Primal Beast for any sort of like major, major farming timings. Can you? You can. You can flash for him by using the ulti to clear waves and the W on jungle camps. It is an option, but I think this hero is best as a tempo setting safe laner, a tempo setting mid laner, or a tempo setting offlaner. These are the roles that I think definitely work best. Well, now why drums in particular? Well, first of all, the buildup in the lane is good. Second of all, your W, the damage is based on how many units you travel. So the more movement speed, the better. And I really like, and he bought it, he went phase boots and then actually after BKB, upgraded the drums into the boots of bearing. So he did have two boots, and it seems like a complete grief, but the reality is the Boots of Bearing are incredible on Underlord, and here's why. In the majority of teamfights, the general execution is as follows. It can change depending on how far ahead you are, but it is, it's as follows. You charge in, you ulti someone, okay? You pounce in, you ulti someone. That's going to take up a large portion of your BKB duration. It just is, all right? Especially if you only have a six-second BKB duration, this is going to be the far majority of your BKB duration. Trample, your second ability, the, the pouncy one, is a long duration, it lasts a long time. So you want to use the back half of your BKB to use the remainder of trample and do damage after you've pulverized, which is your ulti. And then you're likely going to get slowed coming out of your ulti, right? Slowed or stunned. The boots of bearing allow you to use trample at basically max movement speed, even when your BKB is down. So it's a really great item for this hero, especially considering all I think you need to do to own is this hero in team fights is go in, ulti someone with BKB, and then trample with BKB, and then Boots of Bearing active. All right, coming in number two is my personal favorite for the list. I'll go over it real quickly, and that is Octarine Nature's Prophet. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, Speed, really, I should rush an Octarine. No, don't, don't rush Octarine. That is not good. That will not work. What you want to go is the standard items. Treads, Wand, Orchid, BKB, Shard. Actually, Orchid, Shard, BKB is what I've been going most games. I personally really like the kill potential and, and farm and split push potential of a 15 minute shard on profit. But Orchid, Shard, BKB, Octarine. Why? Well, besides the fact that you get lower, you know, Orchid and BKB, which is your first two major items, that's pretty good. You get a lower cooldown sprout from eight to six. Teleport goes down to, I think, 15. Cole, I actually don't know the exact cooldown. I think it goes down to like 21 seconds or something stupid low because you also have your eight second nature's uh, call talent at level 10. So you get a stupid amount of treants, which 
you should buff using, you know, the level 10 and the level 15 plus 5 Treants talent, which I take personally every single game, and you get more Sprout Shards, and you get more ultis. So, it's obviously just good on this hero because you have a lot of active abilities. The Octarine allows you to play a very heavy split push style, forcing the enemy team around the map. However, the downside of this item is team fighting generally. But the thing about Prophet is often when you get this Octarine core, you're going to be heading towards level 20. His level 20 talents are some of the most ridiculous talents in the game. They're as follows. Number one is 100% mischance on Sprout, and number two is Sprout leashes. The 100% mischance is pretty insane. If the enemy team has right clickers or have heroes that need to kill the Treans to get out of the Sprout, like a Sven who has treads and then, you know, is going to quelling, spawn the greater Treant shard, and then kill the Treant to get out. If you have 100% mischance, he's stuck. He can't hit the Treant. He's just blocked against a hero like Medusa. 100% mischance. Insane. Luna, same thing. This talent is nuts. Sprout leashes goes through BKB. So if the enemy team has an Ember Spirit with a BKB and you Sprout him, he can't Slight and he cannot Remnant. So what can he do? Nothing. Stand still. That is what he does. Same thing with Quap. Same thing with a Slark. You can't Pounce. It works on Pangalier Ulti. Sprout, if you Sprout the Pangal Ulti with Sprout Leashes, it stops the Ulti. I'm not kidding. All right, coming in at number three is DK Blink Shard. This is the Topson build, so I guess I've been watching a little bit too much Topson. I actually been watching his, his a little bit of his stream and a little bit of his in-game games because he's like the build guy, right? Topson's a very innovative player, always has been. I think he always will be. And uh, the DK Blink Shard looked very promising on this hero. They buffed DK Shard recently. If you don't know what it is, it's called Fireball. That's it, that's, that's the ability name, and here's what it does. On a 20 second cooldown, it ignites an area for 10 seconds. Very, very long, right? It deals 80 damage per second, which is very significant. And 80 damage per second nuke is very significant. It easily clears creep waves. And it also lingers for two seconds. This is obviously incredibly profound. It's only 1400 gold for an extra ability. 80 damage per second at minute 15 is extremely significant, especially considering you have a stun that you can keep them in it with, right? So you blink on them and then you fireball them. Usually DK in the past would have this problem where he would blink on people in the early game and he would have blink in an ogre axe working towards his BKB. He couldn't kill a lot of targets. Now this shard enables you to do that. I think it's incredibly good as it also allows you to push out waves quickly, something this hero also has issues with when his ulti is on cooldown or if you just don't want to pop it to farm. So yeah, all in all, that's all you really need to know. Um, after the shard, I would just go standard DK items. I've seen him go Octarine one game, which looked trash. <laughs> uh, so I would just generally go like your standard items, BKB into like Halberd or BKB into AC, something along these lines. And, uh, and you'll be chilling. Next up is Underlord mid. I'll keep this one simple. This hero's a good mid laner. It's, you know, it has high damage, a good animation. It's E lets you last and deny very easily. It has a way to shove out waves. So it's like, you know, pretty good. But the big thing is the ulti. It's the portal shit now. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a portal, right? So from mid, you can ulti to a side lane. You see the power here, right? You ulti, right? So you put down this portal that can't be destroyed, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> and then you ulti to a side lane. You can just ulti right behind the safe laner or the off laner. You kill them. You cast your nuke, you cast your pit, whatever you do. And then you go back in the portal and you go back to mid. It's really funny, but it's actually good. And this hero is like a decent mid laner. You go Atos. Personally, I think that like phase Atos is the way to go. Just keep them in the Pit of Malice and in your queue. Uh, and that's that's about it. Like, <laughs> it's actually very good. Like, it is. It is. It's good. I, I think you'll see some pros playing it in some pubs. I, I believe there's potential here. And uh, yeah, it's just a very high tempo hero with this ulti. Coming in at number five, we have Aether Shard Shaman. Basically, nothing too much changed about Shaman. Uh, essentially, your shackles heal now. So it's a nice ability to play around. But the main thing I've been seeing pros go as of late is Aether in a Shard. I don't want to say that this is like the main thing that changes this hero, nothing really changed about the hero, but what I do like is putting a lot of points in shackles now. Sometimes pros would be a uh, 4-4-1, they would have 4 points in ether for the early game, just like nuking and clearing waves and so on. Uh, then they would max hex, because shackles is sort of unreliable, but instead of playing around that, people will max shackles now early on into the game because it heals you. It's, it's a very significant heal too. So shackles at maximum HP heals you for as much damage as it does, which is 270 HP. That's obviously a lot in the early game. If Shaman's getting gone on, 
and he just channels shackles, it can turn around a fight, right? Because he's going to get overcommitted on due to the heal that comes out. And generally, you know, this is kind of a relatively low HP hero, so healing isn't that viable. But in the early game, which is why you can max this spell early on, is pretty strong. Coming into number six, I'll be a little bit boring for one of the picks. I just want to say that I think Medusa is still good, and I would definitely still recommend picking Medusa in a lot of games. And the main build I would recommend going, frankly, has not changed. <laughs> I said I'll keep it boring for one, the last one will be a very innovative build, so stay up for that one, don't click off. But Medusa, just recommend going for your standard Treads, Wand, I wouldn't go Wraith Bands on this hero. Treads, Wand, Dragonlance into Manta, and go from there. I really like the way her talents are set up right now, they feel very powerful to me. I love the 20 attack speed into the minus 12% split shot outgoing damage talent. And uh, yeah, just a huge fan of going D Lance, Manta, Scotty, and the Daedalus and really taking advantage of this level 10 and 15 talent, as well as even Stone Gaze duration at level 20 is quite nice when you're really primarily going for right clicks, as that extra two seconds of Stone Gaze duration gives you the bonus 50% movement speed that it usually does for an extra two seconds. So big fan of this Dusa build. Think the hero is very, very strong, and uh, I would keep it in mind if you were a safe lane player. And finally, last but not least, is Offlane Animage. You heard me correctly. You guys probably saw the game where Enigma picked it, so I'm not too crazy. Uh, but yeah, Manta Diffusal Animage. In fact, the first item you buy is a Vanguard. Uh, I made a full video on how to play this build, how to execute on it, what you should do on the Game Leap website. So go check that out. Go sign up if you're interested in that. Uh, <laughs> but the build is as follows. Orb of Corrosion, as long as you have a kill lane. Okay, obviously if you don't have a kill lane, don't go Corrosion. But Orb of Corrosion into Ring of Health, if the lane's bad, just Ring of Health, into Vanguard. The idea here is you're going to kick out the safe laner by burning their mana with a Vanguard. After that, you're going to go for your standard items. I really like going uh, Vanguard into Treads, into Wand. The Wand is nice, you're going to be fighting a little bit more as you are the offlaner. Not too much, but a little bit. After that, you're going to go for a Manta style. Pretty simple idea here. Any Mage, not any different. You just blink on them with a Manta, and Yolti. And it's good. However, what really is buffed about this offlane Any Mage is the Diffusal and the fact that his Q slows now. So if you didn't know, Diffusal now works with AM's Mana Burn. So essentially, you can burn mana like crazy, even without Manta. You really burn mana ridiculously fast with just your basic auto attack. And so, yeah, what you do is you burn all of their mana and this slows them for 40%. For 0.75 seconds, if they are out of mana, they get slowed by 40% when Mana Burn is maxed out. And so the skill build you go is actually 4-1-1. If you chase people down in the early game and manage to get on top of them, you can burn their mana, slow them, stay on top of them easily, and often get kills this way, especially when your ulti is up. So yeah, this hero is very annoying to play against. It's very difficult to kill and to put pressure on. It's very good, actually, at putting pressure on safe laners due to the fact that mana burn and AM's base stats are great early on into the game. And then you go to Fusel after Manta, and in teamfights, who whomever you blink on is very easy to blow up. I'm a personally big fan of picking this hero against Medusa in particular. If you're going to try a meme like this, <laughs> I would try to do it against something like a Medusa. That's when Nigma picked it, and I think that obviously makes a lot of sense. But there's obviously but there's obviously some other matchups that are okay as well, something like Invoker or Skywrath mid or something like Alina mid that you can burn a lot of mana of and then hit a huge ulti on is good as well. But right, nonetheless, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.